Okay, I wasn't going to do a review this week because I was trying to read a book to review for you guys and hadn't finished it. But then I decided, you know what, I'm not going to skip a review because that's just not Gina. So I dug through my beetle shelf and I found this film, this little gem. There's a place for us in movies, you just gotta lay around. Give my regards to Broad Street with this mug on the front of it. Woo! This film came out in 1984. It's 108 minutes long, and basically it's 108 minutes of Paul McCartney looking much like he does on the box toward or slightly off camera. The whole time. You know that boyish little where he puckers his lips, he's doing it right on the box. It's crazy. <laughs> Basically, the plot line for this film is pretty flat, um, in my humble opinion. Uh, the cinematography is not too tricky, but there are some clever little bits that I enjoyed. And the music is what's interesting in this film, because Paul seriously grabbed onto his cojones and charged forward with this film, because he took a lot of the Beatles material and reworked it. And I know I've seen interviews with George Harrison and he wasn't too happy <laughs> about Paul, you know, doing that sort of thing with the Beatles material. And it's not exactly super spectacular in my mind. Uh, I more enjoy the original songs in the film, such as No More Lonely Nights is in the film, but the 10 minute Eleanor Rigby, it's good. It's, it's phenomenal, you know, songwriting and such, but I don't know. I, I never bought the soundtrack to this. I never felt compelled to buy the soundtrack to this film. And I've only watched the film, I think, three times since I bought it. And I, th I don't think they were full-length viewings. I think I've only watched, like, parts of it at a time. But there's some nifty little parts. There's um, Ringo is in the film, and George Martin is in the film, which is really cool. Um, Tracy Ullman plays a rinky-dink little part in the film, and she's so underused, it almost makes me sad, because I adore Tracy Ullman so much. But she is in the film, so there is some high-level acting in the film. I can't say Paul <laughs> does much of the high-level acting in the film, but he's so great. I mean, basically how Magical Mystery Tour was sort of a drivel that didn't make much sense Give My Regards to Broad Street is sort of Paul's attempt to make a film that does make sense, although the plotline is absolutely horrific. And the ending just makes you go, what? Like, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but not the best piece of filmmaking I've ever seen. But if you're a Paul fan, you'll love it. I loved it back when I was a huge Paul fan. I still love Paul. I'm not saying I hate Paul now, but back when I was a hardcore Paul fan, I bought this film and I just, I loved it, I loved it so much. And it's an interesting film. If you like Paul, if you like Ringo, there's, you know, a lot of little Ringo in here. And Barbara, I believe, yeah, Barbara's in here, that's right, duh. She plays a newspaper reporter and her and Ringo have cute little scenes and it's so cute because it's Barbara and Ringo. And of course Linda, Linda McCartney's in here, duh. <laughs> She doesn't go anywhere, Paul doesn't go. So, but it's interesting. All the little Beatles people who show up in the film. And it's kind of cute. But other than that, I'm not telling you, as a Beatles fan, you have to own this film. As a Paul fan, I highly recommend it. If you like Ringo, he has some cute little parts in the film. But it's mostly 108 minutes of Paul. Just being honest. So there you go. Give my regards to Broad Street. If I had to give it a number out of five stars, I would give it a two and a half out of five stars for cinematography value. For Paul value, it's five out of five stars because it's Paul. It's just, it's just Paul. It's all about Paul. So there you go. Give my regards to Broad Street. All right. So my London Liverpool souvenir piece of the week may look a little simple at first glance. There are places I remember. 
but let me explain to you the Beatlesness of this. What this is, is it is a coaster I snagged from the Hard Rock Cafe in London. It's kind of cool. I just grabbed it because the t-shirts were like 50 bucks and the coaster was free, so there you go. But the Beatlesness of it, they had a couple of guitars and I think jackets in the Hard Rock Cafe, but it was so packed and crammed full of people, we could hardly get in there. We had to sit at the bar, let alone getting in there to eat. There was no way we could wiggle our way around everybody's chairs to get and look at all the cool stuff in the building. But across the street in the Hard Rock Cafe gift shop, they have this thing called the vault underneath the gift shop, which actually is where the royal jewels it's where they used to be held. But now it holds a bunch of rock and roll memorabilia and they lead tours down there and they let you take pictures of everything. So, some of the Beatles related things that were in the vault, uh, they had John Lennon's original lyrics to Instant Karma down there. And they're really cool to look at because you can see how horrible John's typing skills were and all his little edits and scribbles and things. It was pretty cool. Um, also, they had four contracts signed by each of the boys. John, George, Paul, R. Starkey. Who's that? Ringo. Those were four stock transfer forms dated July 30th, 1969, authorizing the transfer of 735 shares of NEM stock each signed and dated by a Beatle. They were signed during the recording of the Abbey Road LP, summer of 1969. Then they also had this harpsichord, which is what Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds and All You Need Is Love was written on. It's down in the vault. Then they also have one of John Lennon's army jackets. This was probably the fourth one we had seen throughout all the museums and memorabilia collections all through London and Liverpool. So, I don't know how many of these jackets John had, but according to these museums, which all claim they have the real one, he had like 12. They also had a pair of John Lennon's glasses, same story. There's like 50 pairs of those things in various museums and collections around the world. How many did the man have, really? And that was all of the cool Beatles-related memorabilia they had down in the vault at the Hard Rock Cafe. So there you have it. Hard Rock Cafe coaster is the actual tangible piece of souvenir that I got from the Hard Rock Cafe in, in London. And I got pictures of all the other cool stuff down in the vault. Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Make some video comments. Whatever you feel like doing. Just do it. See you next week.